I actually have my garden in for the season. I started in one morning and thought, oh, I'll just do a couple of things. And before I knew it, I'd spent half the day out here <laughs> and everything was done. I've gone ahead and put in more tomato plants. Now, these were not new plants. I did not go out and buy new plants. I ended up just taking cuttings off existing plants from last season and ended up planting those. You just take a cutting, stick it in the soil, it gets a little wilty for a few days, then it takes root and off it goes. So these are all cuttings from last year's plants, the ones that I really like, and I could tell you the names. I don't remember them anymore, but I do remember taking cuttings from the ones that I thought were good producers, and I enjoyed the fruit. These are all cherry tomatoes. I don't have any full-size tomatoes, which I'm not upset about. I'm okay with. If I want a full-size tomato, I can go ahead and buy one at the farmer's market. I do eat cherry tomatoes a lot, and what I'm going to do this season is I'm going to actually dry them in the oven and pack them in olive oil so I'll have sun-dried tomatoes from the little cherry tomatoes because I expect to get a fairly big yield. So the tomatoes are in and you can see this one plant down here I'm already getting fruit from. You can see those little cherry tomatoes getting ripe. I think this is the tidy treats down here. It's a very small plant, huge production for a plant this size and really, really sweet. So I'm enjoying this. So the tomato plants are in. One thing I've done new this season that I have never done before is plant potatoes. And this was just a result of me being curious about planting potatoes. Here's a little fun fact about potatoes. It is one of the few foods on the planet that you can actually almost live on. In other words, they're so nutritionally dense that if push comes to shove, you could actually almost live on potatoes. So I thought, well, let me see what it's like to grow them. I'd never done it before. And what I did is I just went to the grocery store and I bought two potatoes, two organic potatoes, which I let sit on the window seal for a little while until the eyes started growing out. And then I chopped those potatoes up into little pieces with the eyes. Each piece had an eye and I just stuck them in the dirt. <laughs> And I thought, I don't know if this is gonna work, but by golly, it sure did. So my potato plants are looking pretty doggone impressive at the moment. I really was just doing this as an experiment, like gosh, if I had to grow food and I wanted to have a very nutrient dense crop, what would it be? Potatoes, and so I'm giving it a whirl. I think everyone should try to grow potatoes because it's such a good lesson in how easy it is to grow really healthful, nutritious, delicious, chemical-free food right in your backyard. So those are the tomatoes and the potatoes. Now I want to point out something over here. I have companion planted my tomatoes with basil. The word on the street is that pests don't appreciate the smell of basil and will stay away from your tomato plants. We'll see because I had a lot of pest issue last season. Leaf miner, other little bugs. I did get yield, but I also had a lot of pest issues. And you can see right now that there is some stressors on this plant right here. And I'm gonna come through later on this morning and clean all those kind of stressed branches up so that the plant itself stays really healthy. I did plant some new strawberry plants just, oh gosh, a few weeks ago. Ago. These are June bearing strawberries, which are different than the day neutrals I've had for a while, and I'll show you those in just a second. This is a really high production plant one time a year. I don't know if you know this, but Florida is one of the largest producers of strawberries. We have a huge strawberry crop in this state, and this is the most common type of strawberry plant, these June bearing. Now, I'm already getting fruit off of these plants, and they've only been here with me a couple of weeks but you can see I'm already getting fruit off of these really high production from these plants these are proven winners and I picked them up at a local nursery so those are doing really well I'm kind of impressed if I had more room I would probably plant a lot more and then just harvest them and freeze them for my berries in the evening right next to my strawberries is a spearmint plant you can see he is happy and healthy and excited you always 
always want to keep your mint in a container because it's invasive and it will completely take over whatever area you put it in if it's not in a container. Here's my little fig plant. You guys might remember I bought a fig tree, which I don't need a fig tree at all. I just couldn't help myself. This is a Celeste fig. It is a smaller fig tree and I have it in the pot. She actually lost all her leaves during a freeze that we had over the winter and is just now starting to come back with some leafage. So apparently she did not like <laughs> that cold weather but she's looking really really good now i will eventually plant her in ground hopefully some point in the future over here is one of my green stalks and you guys have seen me with my green stalks before these are so stinking handy it's a great way to grow a lot of food in a very very small space this has oh my gosh i don't know how many pockets this has a lot <laughs> more than 20 and I have pretty much planted a lot of them. Now up here up top I've got kale. I don't eat kale but it's a nice diversion for the bugs. So the bugs will go after the kale and hopefully leave the rest alone. I have a lot of peppers planted here. I planted some marigolds just recently. You can see the buds are stressed from that because marigolds don't have a pleasant scent and hopefully it will keep some of the pests away. And then I have more kale here as just a diversionary planting next to my peppers. So I have sweet peppers like green peppers. I also have some jalapenos. I also have a particular type of pepper that I can't remember the name of right now that's very specific to Florida. In other words, it grows really well here. I went ahead and planted several of those. Oh, you can see I've got a little something something coming out right here, little pepper. And then down towards the bottom, I've got my herbs. I have some sage right there. I have some curly leaf parsley right there, flat leaf parsley. Next to that, I have some thyme. I'm not sure what this little guy is. I think that might be some type of lettuce from last season that came up. And over here I have some cilantro and some more curly leaf parsley. So this guy is planted up pretty doggone good. Over here is my other green stock that has the rest of my strawberry plants. Now these are the plants that I put in last season. These are the day neutral strawberries. And the whole point or purpose or concept behind these particular strawberry plants is that they produce multiple times a year. Now this is my experience with these plants. They're going nowhere literally going nowhere. They have hardly grown at all. I'm not seeing any buds. I haven't had any fruit off of them. And gosh, these have been in maybe nine months. So I'm not sure. I'm really going to have to do some research and find out what's the deal. Maybe this is the type of plant that's not going to produce until the second year. If that's the case, I've got a while, but this green stock is dedicated to the strawberry plant. So hopefully they're going to take off at some point and I'll have sort of a year round crop of little sweet strawberries. Welcome in. I'm Kimberly. This is Pretty Over 50 where we talk everything beauty, fitness, and lifestyle for the over 50 woman. Welcome to my Saturday morning. <laughs> It's quiet and peaceful around here today. I have kind of a little fun morning planned and I thought you might want to come along with me. If you're new here, welcome in. I'm so glad you stopped by. I hope you'll consider subscribing before you leave and make sure you click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you want all the good stuff, you might want to sign up for my Sunday morning email newsletter. It comes out every Sunday morning. The link is in the description box down below. Every Sunday morning, I send out a very short, very sweet, very free email newsletter highlighting all the cool things I found throughout the week, whether it was a good piece of information or a great sale or something I thought was funny and I wanted to share with you. It comes out every Sunday morning. It's super easy to sign up. You just click the link in the description box down below. I think you're going to love it. As I mentioned, it's just a lazy kind of fun Saturday morning today and I thought you guys might want to come along with me. I'm just going to do a few things. I'm out here on the patio. This is new. <laughs> 
I haven't been out here. Oh gosh, since the end of the season last year, it's been pretty doggone cold. It's been a cold winter here in Florida. So I think it was last weekend, I finally said, all right, time to get the outdoor patio cleaned out. Now this is a screened in room. So two of the sides are the side of the house, the exterior of the house. But then the other two sides are all screens. Plus there's a screen door that goes out to the backyard. Long story short, it can get pretty dirty out here. Over time, you know, things coming in through the door being open, rain coming in, just that sort of thing. So last weekend, I finally decided I'm going to get that back patio cleaned out so I can start hanging out there in the morning. So I come out here in the mornings. I have my coffee. The animals are out in the backyard. It's lovely. It's peaceful. The birds are chirping. <laughs> I absolutely love it. So last weekend, I thought, okay, I'm going to get that thing cleaned up. And I thought it'll take me a couple of hours. I'm telling you what, I was out here for three and a half hours and only got half of it done. I still haven't done the back half, the half that you're not seeing that I'm looking at. I had to move all the furniture out, get all the floors cleaned up and clean around the baseboards. You know how the dirt collects along there. I got up on a step stool and cleaned all the blades of the fan which really really needed it i took all the covers off all the cushions and washed them and dried them wiped down everything it was like three and a half hours and i'd only done half of the patio i still haven't done the other half i might do that sometime this week i'm not really sure although this week <laughs> i think i'm kayaking three of the days so i'm not sure when i'm gonna get that done anywho so i'm back out here on the patio and the way that it goes is that i get up in the morning feed the animals they both eat out here on the patio and it's behind me or it's behind you i'm looking at it so they eat out here and then i open up the back door and they can go out and hang out in the yard now you might remember that dex the cat not too long after I moved here like I had been here maybe six weeks he got out from being in the backyard what I have done is I have reinforced any areas in the backyard that he could get out in and so far it's really working he loves it out here you know he was a rescue cat and so he's a little bit feral he was found on a construction site in a little town called Redding in Northern California and with his little brothers and sisters. He's a gorgeous cat. He doesn't look like a feral cat. He looks like a domesticated cat, but he kind of has that wild streak. So he really needs that outdoor stimulation. I had a pet psychic talk to me about Dex and when he was gone, he was gone for 10 days living in a ravine over on the next street, back behind the houses, a ravine with alligators and all kinds of wild animals back there. And he friggin' loved it. That's what the pet psychic said that he he loved it. So I know that he needs a little bit of that stimulation. He's really enjoying the backyard. He spends quite a bit of time out there kind of chasing the lizards and trying to get the birds, which he never does. But he's been enjoying that. Lucy will like it if I'm out there. If I'm not out there, she doesn't spend much time out there. I'm hoping she's going to grow out of that and start playing by herself in the backyard because it's really a beautiful backyard area with lots of room for them to run around in. Anyway, so I don't know how I got off on that tangent about my pets, but I did. This morning is the farmer's market up at Brownwood Square, and I'm going to go ahead and go up there. I don't really need anything, but I always just like to go and look around, see who's selling what, what's available. Last time I went, it was a few weeks ago, Lori and I went. Didn't need anything that day either, but I wanted to see what was there and there was one gal a little bit up north here in the villages that was selling beautiful handmade goat's milk soap and I bought some of that so that was a nice resource to find some really really good clean soap <laughs> up at the farmer's market so I thought I'd take you guys to the farmer's market with me I don't know if I'm gonna buy anything but we'll go ahead and take a look around the next thing I want to talk about just really quickly is I had done a video a few weeks ago here comes Lucy <laughs> Here, come here. Come here, Lucy. Let's see if she'll get up in the shot. Here we go. Here's Lucy. Hi, sweetheart. All right. Um, so now she's going to want to hang in my lap and get attention from me. I had done a video a few weeks ago about what I eat. And I really do try to eat fairly clean. You know, I'm not perfect. And I'll have a little treat from time to time. And one day a week, I do go to a local scratch restaurant and have a burger. That's my one treat meal of the week. So I'm not perfect, but I do try to eat really healthful because I'm very, very aware of all the chemicals that are in the foods that they sell here in the U.S. I 
I had mentioned that I often will look for foods from Italy because they don't have the toxic cancer causing ingredients in their food in Italy that our FDA allows in our food supply. And you might ask the question, why does our FDA allow toxic cancer causing ingredients in our food? And that's a good question and you should think about the answer to that one. I won't prompt you on that. What I wanted to show you is that I had a lot of questions about how do you find foods from Italy and I just want to show you how easy it is. You can just find them in the grocery store. This is a brand of tomatoes called Pommi, P-O-M-I, chopped tomatoes. Comes in a little box. I just found this in my local Publix in the international food section. Is it organic? No, but here's the deal. Italy does not allow in their food supply for their growers to put the type of toxic pesticides and herbicides on their food that is allowed in the U.S. So I don't worry about getting organic when I'm buying a product from Italy because they don't allow the toxic stuff that you find here in the U.S. Their soil is not as depleted as ours. It's not full of glyphosate like ours is. So when I buy a product from Italy, I'm feeling pretty good about it. So these Pommy tomatoes, I've just kept this box in the refrigerator, opened it up, oh, I don't know, maybe four or five days ago, and I've just used it in some recipes. You know, I use add a little bit of tomatoes for flavoring and for moisture, that sort of thing. So you can find foods from Italy right in the grocery store. Just look, made in Italy or product of Italy, you're gonna have a much, much cleaner product than anything you're gonna find on the shelves here in America. Unless, of course, it states organic. But then again, you gotta think about they're doing some hinky stuff with the organic in the US too. So it, you just have to be really, really careful about what you eat these days. And I know I'm sorry to say that. I am really careful about what I eat these days. I don't want that inflammation. I don't want that glyphosate in my system. I don't want all those herbicides in my system. So just check out foods, products from Italy in the store. I think you'll be pretty pleased with it. So like I said, in a little bit after I have, <laughs> <laughs> the rest of my coffee. Coffee is like what mornings were made for. We're gonna hop in the golf cart. I think I'll take you guys by Lake Okahumka on the way. It's so pretty. It's kind of on the way. It's right across from where I live. It's so beautiful. I think you'll enjoy it. And then we'll go on over to the farmer's market. Before I get changed, I wanted to show you guys something really, really quick. <laughs> I just thought it was interesting and I wanted you to know about it. I ended up getting a pull-up bar for my house. Now, you might be saying, why do you have a pull-up bar? You can't do a pull-up. And the answer is yes, you're right. I can't do a pull-up, but I thought I could try. So I got this pull-up bar just off of Amazon. It wasn't that expensive, maybe $30 or something like that. I'll have it linked down below if you're curious. Anywho, so I bought this pull-up bar because I thought it would be really a fun, fascinating thing to see if I could do a pull-up. Well, I'm talking to my friend Connie you know, Connie, the functional nutritionist I work with, we're talking and I said, I bought a pull-up bar because I want to see if I can get a pull-up. And she goes, good luck with that. <laughs> and I thought, what? And you know what? She's right. I cannot do a pull-up. I can't even do a mini pull-up. I can't even do a beginning of a pull-up. But you know, I'm going to continue to try. So I'm thinking, all right, I bought that pull-up bar. I cannot even come close to doing a pull-up. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get one of those heavy exercise rubber bands, you know, the one, the big ones, which I have somewhere. They're packed around here somewhere. And I'm going to do a lift assist. You know, in other words, string it on the pull-up bar, put my foot in it, and use that as a lift assist to kind of help me with my pull-ups. So I'm thinking, is this pull-up bar a ridiculous thing? Did I just waste my money? And then I saw an article come through from Dr. Mercola. You know Dr. Mercola, I love him. If you're not following Dr. Mercola on his email newsletter list, you might want to think about it. I mean, that guy understands real health. Of course, he's been smeared and lamb blasted and this and that, all from, you know, the powers that be because they don't want anybody to know that you actually can take care of your health in a very natural, beneficial way and be a lot healthier than, than what they have in mind for us. Anywho, that's another rat. So what this email was that came in from Dr. Mercola and I clicked over to read the article was how important it is to just 
hang. And I was so surprised about that. And I went ahead and I read the article. And what it is, is that that hanging really helps your shoulder joints and the sockets stay more flexible to get more space in there. Plus, it feels really, really good on my spine when I just hang. In addition, it talked about longevity markers for grip strength. And hanging on this is really going to improve your grip strength, which is a longevity marker. Now, here's the caveat. When I just think logically about that, my sense is that people that have a strong grip have that because they are involved in activities, physical activities that have given them that strong grip. So I don't think just working on your grip is a very viable or accurate longevity marker. That doesn't make sense to me. My sense is that because you have a strong grip from doing something that's physically active, keeping your body in shape, that's going to indicate a longer life. <laughs> So that's my two cents on that. But what I did after I read that article from Dr. Mercola is I came in here and I just hung and it felt really, really good. So here is what he recommends. He recommends for females that we do a hang for anywhere from a minute to three minutes a day. Now starting out, you're probably only going to be able to do it for 10 to 15 seconds because it's hard on your hand. It's hard to grip for that long and just stay in that position. And you know what? He's right. I can hang for about 15 seconds right now. But he states in that article that doing it several times a day for shorter periods is really, really good for you. So if you want to hop on this bandwagon along with me, it really does feel very good. And I've been doing it, you know, I'll just walk by and I'll just grab it and hang for a little bit and then go about my day. It's actually kind of a fun, nice thing. And I actually do feel well, like I'm getting a little bit healthier. This is the Lake Okahumka Recreation Center, which is right 
across the street from where I live, the little village that I live in. It is so pretty out here and a lovely place to come and just get a little outdoor flair and peace and quiet. You can hear the birds in the background. And I thought it would be fun to just stop by here on the way to the farmer's market. Because the sun rises up over the back of this lake, a lot of people will come out here at sunrise and watch the sun come up. <laughs> I don't do that because I'm generally either in bed or having my coffee when the sun comes up, but I think someday I'm just going to do it. So Lake Okahamka is actually a, I think it's a state park. I don't think it's a city park. And this is the back end of the park. And I'm not sure how the camera is going to shoot this right now because this we're walking into the sun. But it is so pretty and so peaceful out here. They actually have kayaks that you can rent. I don't know if I'd ever do that. It's kind of like you know kayaking at <laughs> like sort of kayaking i need a longer paddle to feel like i've actually been out on the water so this is just a wonderful place to come it's so very pretty and you know these rec centers are throughout the entire villages and they're all different they all have something wonderful and gorgeous this one is particularly nature centered you can see over there the kayaks are all piled up on the dock i wonder if i should go do that someday Day just for fun to see what it's like. Just a gorgeous park. I have not paddled Lake Okahumka at all, not over at the state park area. I think they rent canoes. I'm not sure if they rent kayaks or not. I still have not gotten my rack put on my vehicle. I've been to REI twice. <laughs> the first time they installed it incorrectly, so I drove an hour and 15 there, an hour and 15 home, just to find out that they'd installed the rack incorrectly. It wouldn't work at all. Took it back, had them take it off, and then they couldn't put it back on again. They weren't able to accomplish it. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. I've actually bought everything I need, and I'm thinking I'm going to do it myself. Or if my son-in-law, Ryan, who is so incredibly handy, comes out, I might <laughs> get him to do it for me. He's a fire captain. That guy could build a house with toothpicks and duct tape. He's pretty stinking handy. So you can see how pretty this is and so peaceful. I just love it out here. Kind of makes me want to get on the water and paddle. All right, so over there behind the kayaks on that little green spit of land going out, apparently they're going to build a restaurant there. What great views that will be. Fun place to go get a bite to eat. All right, so let's head on over to the farmer's market. This is the farmer's market that they have every Saturday morning. I think it starts at 9 up at Brownwood Square. Now, Brownwood Square is one of the little, oh, community squares that's surrounded by businesses. And the square in the middle is where people go every evening to dance. There's music, live music, 365 days a year. <laughs> from five to nine. So this is where people go to dance in the evenings and then there's also restaurants and businesses around the square. Today there's an added bonus to the farmer's market. There's actually an art fair going on and they often have additional things that they do here during the farmer's market hours. So I'm going to walk around a little bit and see what's available. Like I said, I don't need anything but you never know. <laughs> what might be available. Already a lot of people are here. They block off the streets for the farmer's market, so it's very pedestrian friendly. People bring their animals, their dogs. It's just a whole lot of fun. They have the food vendors over in this area. One suggestion I want to give you is if you have a farmer's market in your area, you haven't gotten to know the vendors, you might want to do that because last time I was here, Lori and I came and I stopped and talked to one of the gals that was a vendor. It did not say organic on her booth. 
and I asked her about it and her answer was they were non-conventional but weren't willing to pay to get the organic labeling and when I asked her what non-conventional meant she did not use pesticides or herbicides on her food she used things like diatomaceous earth and a few other things that I can't remember the name of now but it was very very clean grown fruits and vegetables and I would not have known that if I hadn't stopped and talked to her so getting to know your vendors finding out how they grow if they actually do grow that produce or if they picked it up from a wholesale produce vendor those are important things if you come out to the farmers market like you live in the area this is a pretty good place to buy beef it's not the best it is grass fed but then it's corn and grain finished ideally what you want to get is grass fed grass finished beef it's that corn and grain that ends up not being something that you actually want to have in your diet however it's better than grocery store beef and I bought from them I've liked the products they're very friendly they have a wide range of available cuts so if you're in the area and you don't want to pick something up from the grocery store this is a better second option